So we kind of have to uh, address the Valley Ava in the room. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the chameleon dollar question is, what would you do if you were competing in this situation? How would you feel? What would be your take on it as a competitor? As a competitor in her situation or a competitor against her situation? Mm, <laughs> both. Well, if I w was her in this situation, I have no idea what she could have been thinking today. And she did have a couple little like oops and bobbles here and there. So it's hard to tell if her program today was just muscle memory from years from the year of training or was she really that focused and able to get the job done. But having to compete with so much going on around her and focused on her, I, you know, I'm impressed, <laughs> to be honest. Um, as for a competitor going against her, it's hard to think about what I would, how I could imagine it. Um, if I was a skater aiming for the podium, knowing that that might not be an option is, is really tough. And knowing that like the people in your field might not be clean. Um, I know for me, like I was tested 13 times between September and the end of the Olympic games in 2018. And to know, like, I was terrified on even every test and I didn't do anything. I was scared to even take pain medication when my back was really bad. Um, <laughs> just to know, like, that might not be the case for other people in my competition. It, it does sit odd. But yeah, there's still a lot more of the competition. Only three people make the podium anyways. Um, and everyone, they have their own goals. So um, I guess in, that, in a situation like that, you just got to do your best and try not to think about it too much. We forget that, um, you know, all of these athletes have to go through doping. And, and I remember, and I definitely wasn't doped as much as you, but I would think the same thing. I'm like, maybe that myth about poppy seeds bagels is true. <laughs> like you, you, <laughs> you work so hard to like stay clean, especially when you're not taking anything or know of anything that you've been taking and, and that, that, that mm -hmm. stress. And then, you know, you're coming here and all the noise around you. I, I think that was pretty good advice. Just you can't control first, those things. Those are outside of your control. And you just kind of, as an athlete, yeah. focus on yourself. But the very obviously. first time I was ever tested, I was 14 and I was the random, I was like 10th in my event. <laughs> And they're like, hey, you're going to get drug tested. And I was like, for what? <laughs> I'm 14. <laughs> and then I like actually like read on things. And I was like, okay, I understand what you mean now. But um, yeah, if I wasn't being tested because I was on the podium, I was almost always the random. So <laughs> I've been tested and have had to pee in front of way too many people in my life. <laughs> for lack of better ways of saying that. <laughs> Yes, for people who don't know, when you're doing your doping testing, you have no privacy at all. No. <laughs> They're in the stall with you. Uh, but it is only one person. It's not a crowd. No. <laughs> yeah. If you are under 18 years old, I did a lot of testing under 18. Uh, there's only one person in the stall with you, but then there's someone outside the stall watching the person in the stall because they have to protect the minor. So um, only one person can see you, but two people can hear you. <laughs> So Caitlin, with this uh, doping scandal, what do you think this does to the integrity of the sport and, you know, eventually, and young potential skaters watching this, um, will they want to, you know, enter a sport where potentially not skating clean doesn't have the ramifications that it should? It's... I don't know what, I honestly don't know what uh, this could do to younger athletes. I do know that it really does put a negative cloud over skating an already political sport and already um, opinionated sport. We have judges, so you got to know it's opinionated. To add this extra piece to the puzzle, it does make it harder to want to compete in in skating, you just lose a trust. And a lot of skating is trusting your team and trusting yourself. And then also trusting the system because you can only do your job. It's not like you're racing to beat a time. It's not like you're, that's really the only example I can 
think of. <laughs> it's not like you're trying to push a time limit. You can only just do your job and then it's left up to everybody else. So putting trust into skating is already hard because, well, you just don't know what's going to happen half the time. So then to add this extra piece of negativity, it, it does break a lot of trust. And it's hard to tell if the younger generation can really fully understand how much this can affect someone. Um, but I know people probably amongst the older generation or um, just the parents wanting to put their kids in the sport also, it could really have a damaging effect. Hey guys, it's Asher and Dylan from That Figure Skating Show. And if you like this video, and don't lie, we know you did, there's actually more where that came from. So subscribe to CBC Sports and click it. Click, click it real good. Da, na, na, uh, uh.